Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can integrate weights and biases with Ultralytics. So once we're doing experiments, we're training our models, we can then go in and track each individual experiment and also the runs that we're doing with the Olivia 8 model, for example. And we're going to walk through every single step, how to set up weights and biases so we can do the tracking in there with all the high parameters. We can lock all the metrics in real time while a model is training. And it's a really good tool when you want to do high parameter tuning. You can see how it affects the losses, the mean error positions and so on. And it has a very nice interactive interface that you can play around with. So let's just jump straight into the documentation and go through each step and then we'll open up a google colab notebook and also the weights and biases website to see how we can set up the whole pipeline initialize the weights and biases connected with the training loop from Ultralytics. we're good to go we can then go in and train our own custom yolvi 8 model and also the other models available with Ultralytics, and we're good to go so here enhancing yolvi 8 experiment tracking and visualization with weights and biases so this is a really good framework and tool to go in and use it's basically just like an ai developer platform which is used for like tracking your experiments when you're doing development of models, doing multiple iterations and just trying to figure out the best model to put into production. So if you just go through it here, we can see we have this interface, weights and biases. Here we can see all the different high parameters. You can have multiple different high parameters that you're testing up against each other. And then you can see how the different high parameters, they affect the accuracy as we can see here to the right. Then we can see the number of runs. So let's say that you want to train a model for 10 runs and you want to do high parameter tuning. You can pretty much just play around with the bat size, drop out, learning rate and so on. So all the high parameters can be tracked. If you scroll a bit further down and we have this very nice interactive interface, which just helps you iterate faster and also make sure that you choose the correct high parameters and the best model. So here for the installation, we can just pip install Autolytics package and also weights and biases. So that's want B. So we're going to open up a Google Colab in just a second. Then we're going to import it, log into the platform, and we're pretty much good to go. We can then go down and add a callback function, which basically just means that once we run our training with Autolytics, every time it finishes an epoch or somewhere else in the training loop, it's basically just going to call a callback function, which is basically just going to lock all the metrics, all the high parameters, and so on, to the weights and biases platform. So here we can see how to do that. We initialize weights and biases with our project and also our job type. We can then initialize a model, could also be a custom model that we want to train. Here we're just using a YOLO nano model. Add weights and biases callback function to our model, and we also enable model checkpointing. After a number of epochs and so on, it's basically just going to set up checkpoints for our model, so we can always go back again for each epoch. Then we can just hit train. We have our train function. We can run that. We can run evaluation and even inference and all the results that we're using are basically being locked to this platform stored you can always pull it up again do comparisons and also model iterations so you're also going to read about how to understand the output but at the end of the day it's basically just having like unique ids for each run we have the model structure including like the number of layers and the different parameters could be that you're testing different variations the nano small medium and model and so on basically just to see how much mean error position can you squeeze out from the model but also all the other metrics as the losses recall position mean error positions and so on will be displayed lock in real time it will also be linked to the weights and biases dashboard as we showed in the top of this documentation page so this is pretty much everything that we need so let's now go in and open up a google colab notebook and we also have the weights and biases platform. So this is basically just the AI developer platform, train and fine tune models, manage models from experimentation to production and track and evaluate LLM applications. So it's now going to log in. We basically just get our setup. So we will also do that once we go inside a Google Colab notebook, once we initialize it. So we can log in with all these different platforms. I'm just going to go through it in a Google Colab notebook. So let's create a new one from scratch. So we're now opened up our Google Colab notebook. Let's just connect to the runtime and go back again. We just take this pip install and you can do this locally as well. It will work on any environment that you're running. So after we connect to the runtime, we're just going to run this pip command and we have the explanation mark. Once we want to run command line interface commands in the Google Colab notebook. Then we're going to initialize our weights and fires environment. So we'll just do that right after. And then we basically just get some login details that we need to throw in. And after that, we can go in and take our training loop and also do our validation. But let's do that in a separate code block. Or we can probably just do everything in once. There we go. 
and let's just grab this part here because we will need to specify the path to our images as well so here we have path one and also path two for our image once we want to do inference because we can also lock that so right now it's just installing after that we can log into our weights and biases platform so now let's run this block of code and we should be able to log into the platform there we go now we can paste in our api key from a profile and hit enter or press ctrl c to quit so you can basically just log into weights and biases let's just go to this api in the browser and then we'll be able to pull the information so first of all we need to log in so after we have logged in we can just copy paste this api key and i'm going to paste it in here we hit enter and we're good to go so right now it's appending the api key and it's going to set up the weights and biases there we go it returns true now we can go down and act like just imported from weights and biases with the integration with ultralytics so we're good to go now we can just go down and specify this and it should be good you can specify your own custom data set down here as we're doing when you're training like your own custom yolo models we have videos covering all of that so definitely check that out how we can take a whole data set set up the whole computer vision pipeline label the images train the models export them and run inference for your own projects and applications right now it just starts with downloading the model and it will also download the data set automatically because this is the first time you're running it in a new environment so we're just running it here once it starts the training let's go in and take a look at the results inside the weights and biases platform so if you just go back in here again and go to my project so creating this new project ultralytics we can see our workspace we can see our runs jobs automated so you can also set up like automations but right now we should be able to see our results so no metrics are locked yet there we go now we can see we have epoch one it all results generating visualizations for the batch so right now we're just training it for five epochs we can go through it and see all the mean error positions and so on they are increasing slightly this is just a coco 8 data set at the end here we can see that it is basically just storing it inside our projects now instead of a run folder it's going to store it with uh, weights and biases and everything will be saved in there as well for later use this is really good for doing iterations also if you're training like 510 models if you're just doing a google collab notebook you might run out of like the runtime it might disconnect you from it and it will basically just delete the model where now you have your checkpoints inside weights and biases that you can just pull out again so everything should now be stored inside our ultralytics train so now go back, back to the weights and biases platform we can see it's running there we go runtime two minutes and we can basically just go in and see all the different train parameters so we have our batch size we have our box losses and so on so everything is visualized here let's go inside our workspace see the metrics and the train batches so these are the exact same values as in our runs directory which will be exported with ultralytics and also the training graphs but we have the five epochs here we can see how it basically just trains over time so again we only have five epochs for now we have the model we have the metrics so you can see the number of parameters we have our train so this is the training box loss class losses and so on so this is the exact same thing as you can see inside the runs directory you can also see like how much cpu gpu and disk network traffic and so on it is using while it's training the model so this is a pretty cool interface again if you're doing multiple runs and so on you'll be able to lock all of them in here so another thing that you can go ahead and do you can do automated jobs automated pipelines and so on you can set up scheduled jobs depending on when you want to train the models the high parameters and so on but we can also do a sweep so when we want to do a sweep it's basically just once we want to test out different high parameters we want to do iterations of our models so let's now also just go in and do the validation and also our inference and lock the results and then we can go in and finalize our weights and biases run let's now just copy paste the code down here let's go inside our folder should have our data sets coco 8 let's just grab one of the image examples from our validation set there we go we copy the path let's just take two in this example so let's just grab the other one here there we go we can now run it so first of all here it will do model evaluation and then after do the inference for a single image or like at least the two images that we threw in there so now we can see that it's running the validation to start with we can see each and individual classes the position recall mean error positions and all of it will be locked into our analytics uh, project inside weights and biases then after that we do our model inference and it's basically just going to extract the results stored in there as well and then we can go in and visualize the overlays 
here we just have our two predictions. So once you've done your inference, you've done your training and so on, you can go inside the artifacts and extract the model that you want to use. So you'll get all the available runs over here to the left and you're going to do comparisons and so on. We have individual versions, both for each individual epoch, but also the best and latest weights. So this is really good because if you terminate inside a Google Code notebook and so on, everything will be stored in here. You can always like initialize from those weights again. If you go inside it here, you can see the files. We will have the best weight and you can even go in and do usage if you want to connect to it. Download the model in here, use the artifact from weights and biases, download the directory and so on. Everything can be done throughout in here. So thank you a lot for watching this video here, guys. I hope this is helpful. If you're testing out different types of models, if you're training a bunch of models that you want to do high parameter tuning on, have multiple runs, but also just lock all the metrics, all the information instead of using like Google Drive or crashing a notebook or even locally, you can store everything on weights and biases. Definitely go and check it out. Use it in your own applications and projects. And then I'll just see you guys in the next video. Until then, happy training.